And so there's a real gap in, in service and product in what these um, uh, customers wanted and these small business wanted and what was out there in, in, um, in the space. And so um, uh, Blue Vine was kind of smart enough to kind of get out there and create um, basic banking services for these businesses um, predicated on what they really want and they really need. Welcome to the Tearsheet Podcast. I'm Zach Miller. Blue Vine's roots are in digital lending to small businesses. Beginning with a factoring product, the company moved into lines of credit. And when PPP rolled out at the beginning of the pandemic, the company ended up helping 155,000 SMBs receive over $4.5 billion in assistance. As the company has matured, it's also introduced business banking. Freshly appointed Chief Marketing Officer Patrick Adams joins us on the podcast today to talk about Blue Vine's trajectory into banking. Adams was most recently the head of U.S. marketing at PayPal, after stints running marketing at Victoria's Secret and BMG. He's juiced on the potential the firm has to go deeper into solving the pain points in SMB banking, and we talk about his plans to grow and expand the business. Patrick Adams is my guest today on the Tearsheet Podcast. Hi, my name is Patrick Adams. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for Bluevine, responsible for all the direct-to-customer marketing for the company. Awesome. And, and before we talk about this role, I want, I'm really interested. I actually, you and I, I didn't tell you this in, in, the, pre, in the pre-recording, but um, we spoke a couple of years ago. I'm curious to know about um, where you came from in your career up to this point. Sure. You, you know, I, I started my early career in, uh, in banking and so I spent about eight years in the retail bank at Chase. Um, part of that time was uh, specifically a product manager for business banking. And so I would say um, that's really where I got my early start was in the business banking uh, side of the business. Um, uh, but then after my Chase um, stint, I went over to um, a company called uh, Bertelsmann. Bertelsmann was a negative option music club uh, mm-hmm. that focused on books, movies, and DVDs and um, worked my way up from a customer management role there that focused on customer segmentation and database management to the head of customer marketing. Um, Spent about 10 years there and went through a slew of um, acquisitions and mergers um, with companies like um, Columbia House, Mm -hmm. um, Bookspan. Um, So when I left that business, uh, I was responsible for books, movies, and music, probably about 23 websites and um, maybe eight or nine million active um, subscribed members to the business. Uh, and then after BMG, um, I was approached by Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret was a um, looking for someone who really understood how to trans um, or migrate customers offline to online. And it's a lot of what I had done at BMG. So BMG was a catalog um, based company that while I was there had to figure out how to, you know, bring up their first website. Uh, their first email communications and their first kind of, you know, digital footprint. And uh, because of the work that I had done at BMG, um, it it caught the attention of one of the executives over at Victoria's Secret. And they just wanted to talk to me to kind of see, you know, how I thought about um, migrating customers from offline to online, how do you do that profitably and 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 those types of things. And because I had years of that experience, um, we talked and and during the conversation, it became apparent that they had a need for someone to sit in that role. Mm -hmm. And it also became apparent to me that it would be something that I would just love to do. You know, I'd never spent any time in retail and um, it certainly was one of my personal goals to make sure I didn't spend all of my time in one vertical. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of going to, you know, from financial services to entertainment to retail felt like it'd be great and challenging for me and, and my background. And so I did just that. I went there, helped them, um, you know, really migrate a lot of their um, offline business online and then kind of bring up um, their digital footprint. You know, when I joined the company, um, the website was more of a brand website. It wasn't an e-commerce platform. And so one of the first things we did was um, make the website a truly merchandisable, shoppable experience. 
And um, we also brought up all their social media and mobile website and all of the things that, you know, a, a more modern day co company would need in order to, to sell. Um, and, you know, when I left, I spent about five years there. When I left Victoria's Secret, it really was my plan to go to a, um, a much smaller business. I had spent my entire career in big, kind of big brand um, corporations. And, uh, and I really wanted to, to see what it felt like to, to work in a much smaller, much more scrappy, uh, flat organization. Um, and so one of the first things I did was I started working with some startups. I worked with, um, as an advisor, Dormy. Um, which was an online um, only uh, retailer mm -hmm. uh, for um, lingerie and uh, swimsuits for all same thing online only retailer for women's swimsuits um, and then more recently with a, um, a CDP an awesome CDP um, called Action IQ and um, throughout the course of the last several years I've been doing that kind of work and then more recently um, worked with a company called um, with Techstars New York and worked as a working right now as a mentor um, with Techstars New York. Um, and so um, uh, get kind of doing the work and really enjoying it. And then, you know, the uh, opportunity to talk with somebody over at PayPal comes up. And I really honestly didn't want to do it because it felt, it felt like it might be more of the same. And it wasn't what I wanted. More the same big company? Yeah, a big company. It was also, you know, um, edging on financial services. I love that it was fintech and I really hadn't spent much time in fintech, but mm -hmm. um, it felt like it might be more of the same. And, and, and you know, kind of the pr promise to myself was to keep myself challenged and curious and kind of putting myself maybe in some uncomfortable spots that I hadn't been in before. And it didn't seem like that would be it. But I did meet the um, head of the Americas with the idea that connections are great to have. So, you know, let's have a conversation. And um, he kind of quick, quickly looped me in um, because he talked about the fact that uh, PayPal up until that time had really been only a merchant first organization, meaning they, um, they sold their products and services to merchants, but they really didn't touch directly consumers in a very big way. And there was this opportunity to create a, a dual sided network where there was merchants and there were consumers and kind of how they would kind of um, peacefully coexist and in, in fact leverage each other's opportunities. And that started to pique my interest. And, um, and, the, and the conversation about, about creating a consumer franchise and a, um, managing a portfolio for mm. North America. And so, uh, you know, within a couple of conversations, he kind of had me, I thought it sounded super interesting and very challenging. And it, it wasn't a space that I, I didn't spend a lot of time in. And so, that was really my mandate to kind of come to PayPal, figure out how I connect the customer side and the um, consumer side and, um, and help the business get to next. The business is really ready for some branding. Um, they were ready for, for real um, active programmatics around customers and mm -hmm. engagement and communication. And so, and that's what I did. So for, for the five years, I uh, headed up um, PayPal North America marketing for the business that included both um, consumer and customer and, um, and, and created programs not only to drive um, uh, customer acquisition and, and consumer acquisition, but also retention and engagement and look for those kind of bespoke marketing opportunities where you could leverage both sides of the network. Uh, Interesting. Make, make yeah. Up. Good. We've had a lot of guests on the show to talk about sort of the, the both the power when you can when you can control both sides of that network. So, Patrick, how many years from the original Chase experience until Bluevine? Well, a lot. Um, I, I was at Chase, um, I guess, until 1997 or so. I was there about eight years, and then from 97 or 98, I went spent about 10 years at uh, BMG, which is got it. You know, entertainment music books. And then um, five years at um, at Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret. At, at, um, at PayPal. So you've gone full circle. Come back to to business banking, lending online. Um, I want to know, sort of, with all that chunk of consumer experience that you had in the middle, um, what that transition feels like for you as you're moving. You know, I know you're coming back home in a way to, to the original Chase experience, but I have to imagine that there's it's a different language, even let alone different set of customers, different industry. Um, can you just talk about that transition? 
Sure. You know, it actually doesn't feel that different to me, as you mentioned earlier on in my career. Um, and this is probably, I always say this is kind of a sad commentary, but it's true. Banking hasn't changed a lot since. <laughs> and so a lot of the terminology is the same. Like I used to do, you know, part of my job was like in product marketing was what's rate setting. Mm -hmm. And so there's, you know, rate setting and there are DDAs and there are interest bearing um, savings accounts. All of that stuff really hasn't changed. So banking hasn't innovated that much other than I would say, um, you know, online banking, self-service banking, which I was a part of right before I, I left. Mm -hmm. And so nothing uh, kind of earth shattering has come to play. In fact, um, many, you know, for both my stint at PayPal and my stint at banking, many small businesses leveraged, leveraged consumer accounts because the um, enterprise um, services and products weren't really built for them. And so they didn't really take them into consideration. And so um, ironically enough, it feels much more similar than I thought it would. And it feels much more like home than I actually thought it would um, because not a lot has changed. And the, cust the consumer base behaves, I mean, the customer base behaves very much like a consumer um, um, person. That's interesting. So, um this is a new role, the chief marketing officer. Um, and I know we've had Ayala Lipschitz, CEO and co-founder of Bluevine on, on the podcast before. Can you talk about, I guess, why this role was created and I guess what it, what it might speak to in terms of the, the maturity of Bluevine as a financial services firm? Sure. Um, the, the role was created um, primarily because uh, um, Bluevine's at kind of like this kind of pivotal moment in their, their kind of trajectory. And um, they have just recently, they, they did an, an, an enormous job in, in building out what was their core business, which was factoring lines, loans mm -hmm. uh, for small businesses. And, and, and that business from the time that they kind of kicked it off, I guess in 2014, um, up until current day, you know, was growing by, by leaps and bounds, like they double, you know, every single year. And so it really, what they put in the market, mostly because they built products that were created specifically for small businesses, mm -hmm. um, was immediately uh, adopted and, and kind of taken. And they built this really loyal um, uh, customer base uh, in, in no time. And um, I would say about a year ago, they uh, were smart enough to um, start looking into, um, you know, banking services for small businesses, realizing that um, what small businesses represent about, um, I guess, 30, there are about 30 million of them in, 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 in the country. Uh, they represent half GDP, half of the nation's workforce, you know, just a huge um, impact on our economy. Um, but I think when you, when you talk to small businesses and you ask them about their banking relationships, more time, I think less than 10% thinks they're being served well with their current, you know, financial services provider. And so there's a real gap in, in service and product in what these um, uh, customers wanted and these small business wanted and what was out there in, in, um, in the space. And so um, uh, Bluevine was kind of smart enough to kind of get out there and create um, basic banking services for these businesses um, predicated on what they really want and they really need. And um, they put a beta in place in 2019, probably about a year ago, mm -hmm. um, that um, saw rapid adoption throughout the course of the year, like really phenomenal growth. And, um, and, I, and I do believe there's kind of information coming out within the next month or so about kind of the, the number of accounts we've opened and, okay. usage and all that kind of stuff and that they that will be releasing. But um, it, it was a, it, it was kind of, you know, open arms, everyone wanted it. And um, uh, from a customer service perspective, high grades, high marks. And so um, that to me was super, super impressive on how they just kind of went in there, took hold of a situation and, um, and based upon their conversations with, the, with small businesses, created another layer of products. Um, to, to satisfy their needs in a very customized uh, way. Um, so, yeah. Can I ask you, it feels, so we're, we're seeing this convergence from all other, you know, parts of financial services. So like we've seen, you know, online investment platforms kind of morph themselves into challenger banks by adding in banking services. Uh, we see lenders like Bluevine moving in, in, into, into core banking. 
Is, is this a transformative thing for Blue Vine? Like is Blue Vine, the future Blue Vine, it's, it's a business bank that does lending or is it a lender that happens to provide a, a, a is, is this another product for a lender? Do you understand what I mean? I mean it, yeah, I do. I, I think if you think about um, the ultimate goal, right? Um, where, um, you know, the, the, the idea is, is, is to um, basically create a suite of products and services to satisfy small businesses needs, whether it be lending, deposit base, this is just kind of another step in that direction um, where we're creating products and services for, you know, the small businesses that are kind of fall through the cra cracks or underserved at other um, uh, in traditional banks. And so I think it's just another series of products and services to kind of meet our mission, meet our, our goal. Um, and, and the fact that there are so many uh, others kind of out there doing the same says to us that we're kind of on track, you know, mm -hmm. that there clearly is a need in the marketplace. And because we have such a passion for small business, you know, we're happy about that because it means that um, more small businesses are getting served um, at, at the very least uh, are being paid attention to. Um, and that's a good thing, especially what small business has been through in the last six or eight months. Totally. And given, given what small business has been through the past six, eight months. I know some of the data coming out of Blue Vine was, Blue Vine was very active in helping small businesses with the PPP program. Can you talk a little bit about that? And, and I believe it influenced, it even influenced your decision to, to join the company. Can you talk about that as well? Yeah, it, it was, um, yeah, for sure. So I had um, heard about Blue Vine um, specifically probably about a year or so ago because a colleague of mine from PayPal had gone there. And so, you know, we had stayed uh, in contact and we started conversations um, maybe shortly thereafter. Uh, and then the, the pandemic hit. And one of the things that really, and, and obviously the business was just like viable and really strong and growing and just impressive on its own from a lending perspective. Um, but what really struck me the most is the minute um, the pandemic hit, how the company from a kind of all hands on deck perspective, pivoted completely to PPP. Everyone was in the mindset of servicing small businesses to get those loans out as quickly and as efficiently as they possibly could. I think they, 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 they were able to get behind about 4.5 billion funds to small businesses. But you know, if you kind of think about it, um, touched about 160,000 small businesses and, and possibly saved you know, almost 500,000 jobs. Uh, that to me was so incredibly impressive. Um, and I had been working with other small businesses at the time and um, the pandemic almost brought them to their knees. They couldn't adjust and pivot quickly enough. And so I, I thought to myself, wow, what an incredible testament to AL, right? As a leader, mm -hmm. to be able to get razor sharp focus and get the company to turn in a dime and to keep fulfilling on its mission in an incredibly difficult time. And, um, and that really for me sealed the deal that I, I wanted to be part of what this company is doing because there's something super special about them and their mindset and their passion and their dedication uh, that you don't see very often. That's very, that's very inspiring. And I, I'd love to hear, Patrick, as I know you're just three weeks into the new role, like sort of what your objectives are um, for the next six months, a year, um, what kind of organization are you stepping into and like, wh what do you focus on in terms of achieving? Sure. I inherited a really smart, um, scrappy team um, and they've been super helpful in, in, in onboarding me over the last three weeks. My focus out the gate will be certainly um, the banking side of the business. Um, and, and, and my real thrust will be uh, connectivity um, between Blue Vine and the customer base. So really getting to know not only the business, but getting to know the small business customer, what they really, how they're experiencing our products and services today and what they need from us in the future. And so creating a, a dynamic and interactive dialogue between us and, and our, our clients to make sure that we're with them every step of the way and that we're um, giving them a great end-to-end -end experience 
We're giving them the products and services they need and they desire in a timely fashion and at the stage at which they are in their, their own businesses development. And do you think that will impact, um, this is a very technical question, but it's, it's important, I think, to listeners of the podcast, the, the, the channels of which you, through you, which uh, you'll acquire customers in the future, but do you think that'll expand or that'll change given your background? It definitely will change. Um, I'm, I, because I've been in marketing for so long, you know, I started in direct mail, so traditional direct mail, but then honestly, you know, cut my teeth on the beginnings of digital and I spent like the last, I guess my, my two um, positions very heavily focused on direct to customer, direct to consumer digital mm -hmm. acquisition. So I do think that you'll see Blue Vine um, engaged in a multi-layered approach to acquisition, I, you know, my philosophy is to meet customers where they are and acquire them um, uh, uh, via a channel that they're most comfortable with. And so I, I do think that you'll see um, our methodology change and shift over, over time. Patrick, thanks uh, for joining us on the Tear Sheet Podcast today and good luck in the new role. Awesome, thanks so much, appreciate it.